most prolific at the moment. We put in too much work. We're we'll all happy yeah. with it. Let's go. Bring it up, baby. Let's go. Get up, baby. Get up. What is good, YouTube man? Today I'm back with you guys with the nation for another video. And today, 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 yeah, I got two man, two. I'm trying to make it up to y'all. So we're bringing the second video of the day. And as you can see by the title and by the thumbnail, we are here. We're going to talk on why I believe the Raiders have fallen short. In four of our five matchups in this season, man. Um, to kick it off, to be blunt, we've only lost by a total combined 14 points in four losses. What does that mean? We've been in every single game. Our largest loss this year has been a six-point deficit. And that was against our week one matchup against the Chargers. Now, in that game, we know that was just a tough one. AFC, divisional rivals, we knew that that one was going to be a tough matchup. They got the best of us that night. I would clearly, I would say that if there's any loss that was clear, that I felt like the team fully, full-blown, outplayed us, outcoached us, it was in the week one matchup. Week two. Week three, week four, we won, and week five, I felt like we should have, could have won every single matchup. So let me start off with the Arizona Cardinals, right? Um, if I'm going to be honest, going into that game, by halftime, nobody thought that there was any chance in the freaking world that the Raiders weren't going to come out of that game victorious. But we found a way, and I believe that the plain, most simple answer, and you're going to see this be a trend in this video, is the coaching. The man that is leading this team, the head coach that we've put so much trust and so much faith into this offseason coming over from the New England Patriots, high, high expectations coming from an organization that has won almost everything there is, no, has won everything there is to win and done it multiple times, has been a part of multiple um, Super Bowl winning teams, Josh McDaniels. Now, in my opinion, um, we all love football. We all love the Raiders. And when you watch the game for so many years, you can clearly, and for those of you guys who've also played, um, you can clearly understand that when you have a lead as large as a 10-point lead, a 15-point lead, 17 in week two, our case was 20 points. There's really no reason to repeatedly put the ball in the air. By that, I mean passing the ball, um, giving the defensive line a chance to peel their ears back, and just rush your quarterback. I don't think that that's a smart move, right? I, I, I really don't. I don't think that's a recipe for success, at least not in the NFL, and especially not in a formation that we ran almost 16 17% of the time in that game, which was the five-wide formation. Very dumb. Um, you have a very good back there behind you with Josh Jacobs. You should feed your running back. Um, when you're up by that much points, there's no reason to consistently air the ball out, go into a five-wide formation. You're putting yourself behind the eight ball if you don't get up at least four or five yards on every single pass play. It doesn't allow you to really give the defense another threat of running the ball or a play action, which pulls linebackers down, pulls safeties down, all that kind of good stuff, right? So week two, coaching wasn't the best, isn't the best. Week three, you say, all right. That was a weird way to lose. We went down 0-2. Wow. You head over to Tennessee. Mr. Derrick Henry has been very quiet. We can get this. No. 
that was probably, and this was one that I predicted when I did my uh, score predictions or record predictions. I said that the defensive line was going to be too young and won't have enough, um, how would you say it? It wasn't going to have enough time to prepare for the battle that comes with facing the Titans and Derrick Henry. And that's exactly what happened. In the entire first half, they had their way. But in the second half, they were almost completely shut out. Um, and that's been a trend twice this season, almost three times, where our defense has shut out the opposing team's offense for an entire half of football, and we simply don't take advantage. We saw that in week uh, week two, our home opener. Defense shuts out the um, Kyler Murray-led Cardinals in the entire first half, holds them to zero points. Against the Titans, held held them to zero points, um, and even even against the Chiefs, uh, at one point in time, I believe they had Chiefs um, to three points in the second half. So, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's pretty it's pretty obvious um, what could be named as or deemed as the problem. But nonetheless, we're in Tennessee. Uh, we start clawing back, but again, at this point, it's too late. You have a de- deficit, and it's too late to try and establish a run game. So there, again, you're in a point where you're having your offensive line having to go out and protect with just five guys. You go five wide. You try and air it out. By this time, you don't have Renfro anymore. He's hurt. Um, So you're down to basically Devontae and Matt Collins because Darren Waller is dropping passes left and right. You can't really involve Jacobs in the offense because you waited too long. Your offensive coordinator didn't make that um, a point of emphasis in the offense earlier on. So you can't start to rush the ball when you're down by two scores. You lose that game. Well, okay, you're 0-3. That's fine. We had a layup, and yes, I'm saying the Broncos are a layup. Um, that team was fucking horrible. I mean, their their offense sucked. Their defense, yes, was good, but what did we start to do? We saw that there is no way that you can get away from handing off that ball to Josh Jacobs, we committed to the run. We ran 38 times and had 34 pass attempts. That is a balanced attack. That is a recipe for success. When you don't have the elite of the elite, I mean the Josh Allens and the Patrick Mahomes on your team, you have to have a balanced attack. You cannot say that we are going to pass the ball 40 times and have that be a sustainable um, way to win throughout the season. Yeah, you can get by. We saw the Indianapolis Colts get by, uh, letting Matt Ryan throw the ball 58 times against the Jacksonville Jaguars yesterday. But it's not sustainable, right? So we have a very balanced game, 38 rushes, 34 pass attempts, and we put on one of our best performances. Great. Then we say it's time to turn this ship around and make a statement game on primetime football Monday night. The lights are on us, and we come out firing, man. 17-point lead, and we shy away from the run. To open out the second half, we get the ball back after they score a touchdown, and we're still up by two scores. Josh McDaniels, Mick Lombardi, whoever it is that wants to decide to really shit the bed in the second half in almost every single one of these scenarios. Yet again, we come out in shotgun. We hit J- Josh Jacobs for 11 yards on a on a pass play into the flats, and we say, you know what? Let's just keep passing the ball. Shotgun doesn't work. Shotgun doesn't work. Shotgun doesn't work. So that was four consecutive passes. We send Daniel Carlson out on the field after the Kansas City Chiefs uh, begin to gain momentum uh, on their side, get a touchdown, their offense starts going, boom, they get seven points, and now it's a three-point game after being up 17-0. to What I am getting at, the play calling has been horrible at times, and I mean horrible. Um, situational football is extremely, extremely important in this league. Um, I do understand the aggressiveness when you are facing the Kansas City Chiefs. I 100% understand that. But as a coach that's been in the league for 20 plus years um, doing this professionally, he should understand clock management. He should understand situational football, which means when you're running back, 
has over 70 yards in the first half, you make it a point of emphasis that we're going to go at you and we're not going to let you get this ball back. We're not going to let Mahomes get this ball in three minutes because we're not going to just try and go out on the field. Our drive lasted two minutes. On comes Patrick Mahomes. At times, the aggressiveness works really well. We saw it. Situational football, fourth and one in the first quarter, you take that shot. 100%. At that point, the game is nowhere near over. But when you have 42 seconds left, and you're in the exact same scenario where you only need to get about 25 yards for your very good kicker to get in field goal range and you take yourself out of Arrowhead with a win, that's not the time to be aggressive. I understand the play call. The play call would have ran actually pretty well if it was ran to perfection. But that means that all 11 players had to execute perfectly. And we saw that that's not what happened. I don't think that you take that real risk. At that point of the ball game, but who knows, man? I'm not a coach. At the end of the day, these are my thoughts on why the team has been losing. These are my thoughts on why the Raiders are one and four. I think that the coaching has been very, very poor in spurts. There's been times where the coaching looks very well. I really like certain designs that we do with our run game. When we do the draws, when we do the counters, when we put Jacobs at fullback and give the defense something to look at, but the whole time we're not going to Jacobs or going to Zamir White on the toss play to the left. I really like those plays. One thing I would like to see more is heavily implement the screen game into this offense a lot more. Heavily implement the play action game. It gives your quarterback time to get in a groove. It gets your running back involved with chip blocks, with flat routes, with angle routes. It allows your offense to get going early. I think that the Raiders are a good team. Our record does not um, reflect that. I think that these are many, many components that we can get fixed. Hopefully the Raiders and the players have taken this time um, to really fix this. This is a mini vent, a mini rant. And simply why I think the Raiders have been losing, like I said, though, combined 14 points for all four losses. This is a good team, you guys. Just very, very, very odd mistakes, odd play calling, uh, mental errors, penalties. They all get to us, right? So I want to make, I want to have McDaniel's hold his word and say, uh, we got to learn how not to lose. Going for two points when you don't need it is a losing play. Going for an onside kick when you don't need to is a losing play. Passing the ball out of half when you're up by 20 points against the Cardinals is losing plays. Doing it three times in a row is losing plays. Doing it four times in a row against the Chiefs out of half is losing plays. So as much as we want to hold our players accountable, the man that's calling the shots also needs to be held accountable as well. If you ask me, I think the defense has done their part. I think the defense has held their end of the bargain. Um, if you look at how much we've invested to the defense, it doesn't compare to how much we've invested on the offense. So if anything, I would say that the defense has done more than expected, if you ask me. And the offense has consistently underperformed. Um, we need to get clicking on all cylinders because we see that when we do, we can go up 20 points and a half. We can go up 17 points and a half. That's how high-powered this team can be. We've just all got to get going on the same page at the same time. Let me know what you guys think. What's the reason, the main reason that you feel like the Raiders are sitting at a 1-4 and four record a month and a half into this new season? Um, is it not McDaniels? Do you guys completely disagree? Is it a Paul Gun or not Paul Gunther, Patrick Graham? Is it Derek Carr? Who would it be? If you have to put it on something, let me know in the comment section down below. Like I said, a mini rant. My thoughts on why the Raiders are sitting at this record a month and a half into the season. As always, you guys, I love y'all. Stay safe. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'm out, you guys. Peace. Welcome to the Death Star, where our opponent's free.